Joining us now, California Democratic Congressman Ro Khanna. Congressman Khanna, uh, welcome back to Fox News Sunday. Thank you, Shannon. Happy Easter to everyone. Thank you very much. Okay, let's start with polling on foreign policy, where we're having this discussion about Israel, among other things. A um, brand new poll out this week shows that when people are asked about foreign policy, they give an 11 point edge to President Trump over President Biden. Um, and specifically, when we asked about Israel and Hamas a few weeks ago, there was a 65% disapproval rating for President Biden. Um, what do you make of that? Americans don't think he's managing this well. I think people realize that there's a crisis. They see images of uh, people dying and they want the war to end. They want Israel to be secure, but they also want Palestinian lives uh, not to be lost. And I think once the war comes to an end under the president's leadership, his numbers will improve, just like his numbers have bounced back on the economy. And in the Bloomberg poll, he's uh, closed the gap in a lot of the swing states. OK, we'll talk about the economy in just a second, but I want to talk about this U.N. Security Council resolution this week. We did not act to veto it or to stop it. That didn't go over well with a lot of folks. Here is former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo on how that's playing worldwide. Not only will Hamas be happy with the abstention, uh, the Iranian terrorists will be happy. Uh, the folks who underwrote, trained the people who committed the barbarities of October 7th, the Russians will be happy, the Chinese Communist Party will be happy, and all our friends around the world will see that an ally walked away from its friends in its time of struggle. Is that a message we want to be sending? I respectfully just disagree with Secretary Pompeo. Look, you have 14 countries in the world in the Security Council that have been calling for a ceasefire and the immediate release of all hostages. We've been the only country in the past that was vetoing it. It actually was hurting our ability to build the multilateral coalitions we need to stand up to Putin, to stand up to Xi Jinping, because we were isolating ourselves from allies we need. And it's a philosophical difference. Pompeo believes that America can go it alone. President Biden believes in building alliances to stand up to Putin and Xi Jinping. Okay, my understanding on this latest resolution is that it was calling for an immediate ceasefire, but not conditioned on getting the hostages out immediately. And I know that those are ongoing conversations. We think they're continuing in Cairo over the next few days, too. You mentioned the economy, so we've got polling on that as well. Um, new data showing that when people are asked, are you better off financially than you were four years ago? A majority, 52% say they are worse off. 26% say about the same. But only one in five think they're better off now than they were under President Trump. That includes 86% of independents who report that they think the economy is negative and you need them to win in the fall. Well, look, this country went through COVID, and I think that had a huge, huge impact, and we're still recovering from it. But the question is, what is the choice? Here's what President Biden wants to do. He's created 15 million new jobs. He wants to bring back manufacturing. He wants to raise wages for folks. He wants to lower the cost of prescription drugs. President Trump had four years. What did he do? He had corporate tax cuts. Many people benefited from it in Silicon Valley, in my district. And the question is, where do you think the economic vision of this country should go? I believe invest in the working and middle class. There's no doubt people are hurting uh, because we're still recovering from, the, uh, from COVID. But President Biden has a better economic vision. Well, why do the polls say the opposite? Why do more people give the edge to former President Trump, say they were doing better under him and they prefer him to handle things like the economy and inflation? I think many people think four years ago was prior to, to COVID, and COVID really hurt folks. I mean, we had uh, a huge increase in unemployment. Uh, we had a lot of supply chains get interrupted. But President Biden has steered us out of that uh, low point, and he has done it by investing in infrastructure, by creating 15 million new jobs, lowering prescription drug costs, building infrastructure. Uh, and the point, though, is elections are about the future. I mean, what is President Trump's economic agenda? As I understand it, it is massive tax cuts for the very wealthy. President Biden's economic agenda is a raise for the working class. And I think people will see that Bi President Biden's policies will be better. Well, they had the optics this week in New York of two events, uh, a huge fundraiser with former President Obama and Clinton, a lot of star studded folks at Radio City Music Hall raised more than twenty six million dollars. It's what campaigns have to do these days. But across town, President Trump was at the wake for a fallen NYPD soldier. Now, somebody who's not a fan of President Trump, Bill Kristol, tweeted about it. He said, an unfortunate day politically for the Democrats. Biden does a fancy NYC fundraiser in the midst of chaotic left wing street protests. Looks like limousine liberalism plus the breakdown of law and order. Trump attends the wake of a slain NYPD police officer on Long Island. David Axelrod, a longtime uh, strategist and, and Democratic uh, official, says not wrong. He agrees the optics of that were tough. 
Do you think that President Biden should have made time for both events? Well, my heart goes out to the slain police officer's family uh, and his sacrifice for uh, the community and the country. Uh, and I don't want to in any way diminish that. I think President Biden's uh, event with President uh, Clinton and President Obama was about unifying the Democratic Party, showing that this Democratic Party is going to be energized and inspired uh, and is going to be prepared to win in uh, 2024. But of course, uh, the president should uh, convey his condolences to, to that family, and I'm sure uh, he will. And Congressman Khanna, very quickly before we go, the House will be back soon, and the Speaker is under threat of a vote to vacate the chair. Um, would you join other Democrats in saving him or uh, allow it to fall apart? I would consider it under two conditions. One, uh, we get the aid into Ukraine, so we stand up to Putin. And two, let's get the $600 million uh, to rebuild the bridge in Baltimore. I mean, I read somewhere it was going to take three years, four years. China would do it in three months. Let's mm. get the steel. Let's get the permitting. Let's get the funding. Let's show that America can still do things, big things, when uh, there's a crisis. And let's have a timeline of six months to do it. So if okay. Speaker Johnson does Ukraine funding in the bridge, then I'm open to it. I would suspect other Democrats may join you. Okay, Congressman, thank you very much for your time. Always good to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.